We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lab Doctors Podcast. So this week we're going to be talking about mental fatigue. Mm. So the first question that I have for everyone is, do you feel tired after using your brain a lot? Mm. I don't know. I s- yeah. <laughs> Maybe after an exam, you feel Yeah, a bit it must like, be like those really, really high, like, or like you do a Sudoku puzzle. Yeah. That kind of fatigue, but not like day to day, I feel. Okay, oh like. God, does that mean we don't use our brains day to day? It's not like you need the full concentration. You know what I mean? Like. Is that bad? Does that mean I we're not so. using our full concentration? It's just the nature of your job. It's not like you're doing Sudoku puzzles the whole day. That's not your job. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you feel tired when there's like short bursts of like intense thinking yeah. how about like prolonged usage of your brain i feel like if i'm reading i don't think it's brain fatigue it's like just boring <laughs> and then i just fall asleep yeah i don't think i feel fatigued from doing these things oh interesting like if i'm studying i don't feel fatigued so second question do you think you make good decisions when you are mentally tired Absolutely. That's why <laughs> my peak decision that I regret the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think causes mental exhaustion? The glucose stores in our brain. No, there's no stores of glucose in our brain. Uh, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but like we use it up. We use up the ready source of glucose that's somewhere in our body and it's all used up by our brain. So what about like, oxygen? Actually, I'm not sure because I think uh, when you're super intense, you don't yawn. Like when you're focused on something. Like you're alert, right? Yeah, but technically you're using up a lot of oxygen, I guess. But I don't know. Apparently yawning has nothing to do with oxygenating our brain. Okay, none of that. <laughs> but interesting you say glucose because I thought it was glucose glucose as well but if you think of it as like your muscles like your skeletal muscles and everything then yeah you get fatigued because you use up all the glucose right but the brain is an organ so it doesn't necessarily go through that same glucose metabolism okay before we talk about neural metabolism let's get into an earlier study led by the same group in france so they published a recent paper but to talk about it i feel like we have to go back to their 2016 paper so what they did is they had these groups of participants perform either easy or hard version of the same task for the same duration and then they measured fatigue effects by measuring choice impulsivity or the likelihood to favor immediate rewards so apparently the more tired you get the more likely you are to choose an option that guarantees the reward immediately so say i'm like oh would you rather have 40 dollars now or 50 dollars in a month is that why people eat very late night supper because they just make very bad decisions that like it's immediate instant gratification is always very bad food like yes it's because you're tired right and then you're like okay i just want something instantly to Mm. like boost my mood okay so the participants performing the hard version of the task showed an increased preference for immediate rewards over larger later rewards Mm. and this was also associated with decreased activity in the left lateral prefrontal cortex and they assess this via functional MRI, so fMRI, or MRI is magnetic resonance imaging, where they use radio waves to create a spatial image of the activity in your brain. So if you're curious, the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain associated with cognitive control or working memory, reasoning, and planning. Okay, so the initial study found decreased activity in the lateral prefrontal cortex after using your brain for prolonged periods of time. So the current study, the one that was published this year, attempts to explain why this is the case because all they found in the previous study was like lower activity. So the study itself is actually quite technical and they use a lot of controls to minimize confounding factors. So if you are curious, we'll link it in the description. Okay, so before we even get into the paper, so like we talked about MRI, but in this paper, they use magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So have you that? heard of that? No. no. Okay, so the MRI scan uses a powerful magnet and like I said just now, radio waves and a computer to give you spatial information. So spectroscopy involves a series of tests that are added onto the MRI scan to give you chemical information about what you are scanning. Okay, so like one of it gives you spatial information and gives you an image, whereas the other one gives you like the brain chemistry. Okay, so let's get to the easier part. So the researchers again split the participants to easy and hard groups and they had to complete tasks for six and a half hours with just two 10-minute breaks. And this is supposedly to replicate a work day. A work day, we only get two 10-minute breaks. <laughs> I think it's the six and a half hours. But they don't want to keep the participants for too long. 
<laughs> this study actually sounds quite difficult. So both groups alternated between exercises designed to make them tired. So like mental exercises. And then like the next alternating thing is exercise that gauge how tired they were. So the cognitive exercises included distinguishing between upper and lower case, vowel and consonants, and depending on the colour of the letter. So you have to like keep just choosing like, okay, is this caps lock or not? Is this mm. um that kind of like mind games? And then apparently it's like the easy and the hard groups, the task is like similar. It's just that the hard group is like slightly more complex or they layer like more things. Like they will introduce like colour. So like mm. for red colour, like which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Okay, so that's the cognitive exercises. So the measurement of fatigue were economic decisions layered with delay, probability, cognitive and physical effort. So like for delay, like I said just now, it's like, would you rather choose $41 now or $50 in a month? And then the cognitive and physical effort, including performing cognitive or physical tasks to like get a reward. So they'll ask you to pedal on a stationary bike to like get the reward. And they're like, oh, do you want to do it or do you not want to do it? So it's like you can pedal for X amount of minutes to get a reward or you can pedal for longer and then maybe you'll get a bigger reward. So which one would you rather do? And then you actually have to like do it. Okay. I want $41 now. <laughs> yeah. I know I will go for the bigger reward. I want $41 now. <laughs> Okay, so on top of capturing their economic decisions, so like the rewards are like economic, right? So, but it's just layered with like the different factors, like how much effort you're willing to put in, are you willing to delay it, and the probability. So it's like, what if you have like a 40% probability of getting like X amount of money or 80%, like which one would you take kind of thing. So they also measured participants' brain chemistry, like I mentioned earlier, via magnetic resonance spectroscopy and other fatigue markers. So what they found is that the hard version group, so the participant who performed like the hard version of the task, presented with fatigue markers, specifically reduction in pupil dilation, which has also been associated with demand in cognitive control and level of effort invested. So the more tired you get, there's less pupil dilation, which supposedly is like linked to less focus or like more like fatigue. This hard version group also showed a shift in choices towards options proposing rewards at short delay with little effort. And finally, for the brain chemistry part of this, the heart version group had higher glutamate concentration in the synapses of their brain, specifically in the prefrontal cortex. So, have you all heard of glutamate in the brain? It's a neurotransmitter or inhibitor, I can't remember. But that's why MSG causes headaches, right? So, glutamate is actually an excitatory neurotransmitter, mm. which means that like when it is present in the brain, it causes like neurons to be more likely to fire. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, but MSG, like when you eat it, like that glutamate doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. So, it's not like specifically the glutamate that is acting on the brain from MSG that causes the headache. Mm. It's Probably salt. The you eat Maggie Mee, you get headache meh? Sometimes when it's too salty. Really? Yeah. Okay, so glutamate is already present normally and is essential for brain function. So if you think about it, we need neurons to fire for our brains to function. But as always, too much of something can be bad for us. So what previous research has found is that excess glutamate, which can also be accumulated in stressful condition, results in the disruption of the excitation and inhibitory balance needed for normal functioning. So on top of that, it may also interfere with transmission of information and in some cases cause excitotoxicity like if it's very severe so excitotoxicity is like this phenomenon when there's like too much excitation in the brain and it causes the neuron to like dysfunction or die that's like one of the bad things about having too much glutamate okay so but this glutamate finding right is a correlation not causation so it's important to understand that excess glutamate and mental fatigue are linked but like we are not sure whether it directly directly causes it. So before we get to the end, that study also asked participants to self-report their level of fatigue. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, there was no significant difference in self-reported fatigue scores between both groups. So the number increased similarly across the session. So like as the sessions went on and like as you keep alternating, the number like that score from both groups increased similarly, but there was no significant difference. Mm. So the researchers actually theorized that this may be due to dissociation between actual mental fatigue 
fatigue and conscious perception of fatigue. So basically they are saying that people generally aren't good at listening to their bodies, similar to real life when people go on like working or continue to drive when they are tired, resulting in errors or even hazardous consequences. Mm. So what do you think we can do about it? Um, exercise, <laughs> drink more water, don't make decisions late in the day, do it when you're wide awake. Unfortunately, they say that there's nothing you can do at the moment except rest and sleep. So work days should consist of sleep breaks, just like in kindergarten. I mean, evidence has shown that glutamate is eliminated from the synapses during sleep. Work day should be three hours, sleep, three hours, sleep. Sure. <laughs> I mean, all this is just to like say don't overwork yourself because like you could be less efficient or less effective at the end of the day. Right. Which I mean, is quite self-explanatory, but now they're like using the glutamate as like the reason for that. So this neurometabolic theory and accumulation of glutamate is not fully understood. And given the fine excitatory and inhibitory balance that our brain works within and how transient this buildup of glutamate is, prescribing drugs can be very tricky in this scenario. So all this to say that you should just rest and sleep and let your body like eliminate the excess glutamate by itself. So, in conclusion, don't be too hard on yourself when you feel tired after a long work day and make sure you rest. Is this therapy you think for you? No, I just like, I just need to find a reason to like convince myself that it's okay to rest at night, you know? I don't need, I'll be like, my body is tired, let me rest. <laughs> Yeah, I think last time I used to force myself, but I realised that I really don't produce my best work at night. Yeah, so not the scientific evidence to back that up. Okay, and as usual, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify. A like and a comment would really help us out. You can also follow us on our social media, Instagram, Twitter or Facebook, and feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. We'll post the links in the episode description, so check them out if you're interested. Okay, bye. <laughs>